Now at seven, a tough return to the road after a bizarre incident on the freeway sidelined a local Lyft driver. Plus, federal investigators go head to head with Boeing execs over the door plug blowout over Portland and what the NTSB says seems to be a lack of clear cut answers. But first, escalating tension at a Portland homeless camp. How things turned dangerous as both neighbors and campers become more frustrated over a lack of solutions. That's our top story tonight at seven o'clock. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christine Pitawanich. And I'm David Mulco. Neighbors who live around that southeast Portland camp say things now feel like they're at a breaking point. Blair Best has the update. There's a pain behind these eyes. He's on antibiotics, he's on pain meds. Like, he's my baby, you know, he's, he's my son. Boy. Lacey's dog. So I pick him up like this. He's fighting hundred. through every step. He was oh, recently hit lips. by a car. Got... He's got a huge gash on his leg. That's actually better. It was double that size. The lady hit my dog. She slowed down and just gunned it. Ran right over him and then she left after. Lacey just moved to this camp where it happened on Southeast Knapp Street between Mount Scott Boulevard and 105th Avenue. This row of RVs, a sign, it's been around for years. It was out of the way and just somewhere to go. Let's play Queens. Angie runs a nearby daycare. She's watched the camp grow. Over the last three years, it has definitely gotten progressively worse. We have just garbage and just stuff peeding into the street and it just it, it's getting out of hand. Now the tension between the neighbors and the homeless people are running high. We were here for 20 minutes and we saw it firsthand. I don't care if it's backed up. You guys back this up all the time. This is wrong. It's wrong. And later. This is really bad right now. I mean, this is like a war zone. It could be a war zone. I don't want to be out here. No one really wants to be out here. I do feel for them, 100% I feel for them, but it it's scary. And neighbors have called the city numerous times. I never get calls back. I never, no one ever reaches out, and, it, and it, it, you feel really defeated. A spokesperson for the mayor's office told KGW the site has been posted for removal. They tag them, which they just did today, and then they come and clean them up. Well, two hours later, they're back. We just get the same old story. Nothing has changed in three and a half years. I'm dealing with the same thing. The redundancy is taking its toll on everyone. And constantly having to move every month is, is, is not only draining, but detrimental to mental health. They put me on a waiting list and then they just sit and wait. It's like whack-a-mole. Like they don't know where to go first because there's so much of it in our city. Now this is a complex problem playing out in neighborhoods across our city and just to add some context, recent data shows in the last week of July, the city received more than 2500 campsite reports. They removed about 150 of them and out of all those campsites, 14 people stayed at least one night in the shelter. David. I mean, you can feel the frustration there on all sides here. It of course raises the question, Blair, Portland's new camping ban. We know the sheriff isn't booking people into jail, but in terms of citations or fines or potential court appearances, are we seeing any enforcement? So only problematic campsites are being targeted for enforcement. So we asked the mayor's office today if that campsite we were at qualified, but we didn't hear back. And let's remember the enforcement of this camping ban all hinges on there being enough shelter space for people to go. David. Yeah, good reminder. Thanks, Blair. Appreciate your reporting. A bizarre incident on I-5 has left a Vancouver woman out of work. This is a look at her car after a runaway tire hit it. Our Sydney Dorner is live in studio with us now. In Sydney, this woman's car is crucial to her job. Yes, Christine, mom of two, Alicia Godson, drives Lyft to help support her family while heading to pick up a rider this week. Her car was hit by a large tire on the freeway. It hit the front of her car and caused this serious damage you see here. To Alicia Godson, like many Uber and Lyft drivers, her car is her bread and butter. Driving for eight years now, she uses the money to help her family make ends meet. Both of her parents died during the pandemic and her husband was laid off. It's like more than a car. It's my job. That routine job took an unexpected turn Monday night as she was driving I-5 northbound through North Portland. And just passed the Delta Park exit and this tire came rolling at my car and hit my car. Godson immediately pulled over, calling police, ODOT, and a tow truck worried other tires could hit other cars as well. Coming at my car and then bounced off of my car, went over the medium um, into the 
back into the uh, southbound lanes and landed on the opposite side of the freeway after hitting my car. Even walking a bit to see where or who the tire came from. But no one pulled over to say that it was their tire or that anything happened. Her car now so damaged she can no longer drive it. The whole thing is terrifying. If I can't work, I can't provide for my family. She says she reached out to Lyft, who will not cover the cost of the accident because of her type of insurance. So she turned to her community via social media, hoping for help to track down the person responsible. Someone saw the uh, tire go across, hit my car, fly back over, and they had swerved to miss it. Um, someone else has now commented to check for a DOT number on the, on the actual tire and see if that could lead to any more information. While she's stuck with no money coming in, she created a GoFundMe called Support a Lift Driver's Return to the Road. Realizing that as tough as things may be, she's lucky she walked away unharmed. So thankful, because it's very close. If it would have been a couple inches higher, it could have gone through my windshield. Sydney Dorner, KGW News. We are one week out from the grand opening of Portland International Airport's brand new terminal. And with that nine acre mass timber roof and indoor forest, 70 plus trees come some upgraded TSA security checkpoints. Joe Ranieri is live at PDX. Joe, it sounds like things might look and feel a little bit different. Absolutely right. And not only that, how's this sound? Making it a little bit easier to travel through PDX starting next week as these checkout points are finally open to the public a week from today. And not only is it going to be a little bit easier to travel through here, you're going to notice some new technology too. When you walk through the new security checkpoints at the Portland International Airport, it won't feel like you're walking through the Portland International Airport. There's a lot of work going on. Uh, you know, at times during construction, there were a thousand workers uh, working on the terminal here. And we're in that transition phase now of moving into operations. Trying to get through PDX the last few years hasn't been easy at times. I think you can see it's been constrained the last couple years during construction. Uh, it's been very tight in the ticket lobby. And when you come into this new space uh, next Wednesday, you can see the expansive area. Dan Pippinger, the chief aviation officer for the Port of Portland, says the new construction will allow for people to have plenty of space. That was one of our big drivers uh, back in uh, 2015, 2016, when we started thinking about the project was how, um, how much capacity we have to put people through the security checkpoint where they don't have really long wait times like you might find in other parts of the country. Not only will travelers have more room. There's three main components that it's going to make a lot easier for the traveler experience. It's going to be easier to get in and out thanks to advanced technologies in screening. The first component, as you're going to see when you walk up to the from the lane, is the automated screening lane. That's going to provide a bin for the traveler as they come through. They'll be able to divest everything and keep everything in their bag, which is really important. Instead of having to dump everything out. The second piece of technology that's going to create ease for travelers is our computed tomography. That's also known as the CT X-ray. That is the same equipment that's used in the medical field. It allows our officers to be able to review images in 3D. The TSA agent will know in seconds if what's going through is something that can go with you or not. And the last thing people are going to like is the newest body scanners that we have. This technology allows the uh, passengers as they come through to be able to keep their arms down by their side rather than put them over their head and that creates additional accessibility for our traveling public here at PDX. New technology that will hopefully make traveling a little less of a headache. Oh, David, Christine, we can't do a story about the Portland International Airport and talking about, you know, uh, some new construction and some renovations without talking about the uh, iconic carpet uh, that's go that, of course, was removed years ago. Well, they're going to bring it back in a few locations to find out exactly where it is in the airport. You're going to have to take a trip here from PDX. Back to you guys. Yeah, I was there this weekend along with 1,500 members of the public who got a sneak peek, and I know where it is, but we're going to wait till next week for that. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> well, straight ahead on KGW News, much ado about that door plug, how federal transportation investigators once again are pushing back on Boeing. And a double dose of history made with Team USA snagging the first medals in decades in two Olympic sports. Well, we stayed below 90 today in large part because the wildfire smoke, our air quality taking a bit of a hit. We're down to 86 degrees right now. 
Still looking at a weather impact alert day for air quality issues tomorrow. The air quality alert continues till 8 o'clock, and we'll talk about that weekend. It brings a cool down.